Hey, I'm Darian P. Mack. And I'm Nikki, and this is Notification Squad on, on the, the Leaderboard. leaderboard. <laughs> so Notification Squad is a show where we talk about games, respond to your comments from the week, and most importantly, Nikki, we give out prizes. But first up, we have Unmuted Discussion. And today we're talking about our three favorite games from our childhood. Yeah, so we've been having a conversation a lot of, you know, a little nostalgia yeah. going on in the office. And we actually did a poll on the video, and you should see that on your screen. A lot of the videos, actually. Oh, yeah, we, we put both polls on all the videos. But, you know, asking you guys what you wanted us to talk about, and favorite childhood games was always number one mm -hmm. by a lot. Yes. So we're talking about it, we're talking about our favorite games. So, Nikki, like, when you think about your best or first number one childhood game for the first system that you ever played, what was it? So it's really hard, and I really hope that the games that we mentioned today line up with some of the games that Absolutely. you guys played. But I had to say, and Darian and I both agree, that it had to be from Nintendo 64 oh, yeah, console and PlayStation and prior. Anything yeah, later did. is not childhood. Right, right, right. For us, I mean, you know, we had to... Because in 1996, I was 10, you were yeah. 9, yep. I think, right? Yep. Right. So that's kind of where we set our childhood at. Uh, Adrian's giving us a side eye, like we're old, but that's okay. So for my first game, I had to pick something from the NES, and I was going to pick Mario 3. I love Super Mario Bros. 3, 2, and even the original, but I had to pick Battletoads because Oof. I know it's a notoriously difficult game. I'm going to be honest, I never beat it, but it was just so fun. You know, and when I did finally beat level three, the one with the cards, and not using the teleporter, not going through that special wall that like advances you to another level, I'm talking about actually beating that level without running out of lives. That was like a monumental moment for my brother and I. All the things were just like so, it was like comical, it was funny. It was like punching and kicking these uh, monsters and then all of a sudden your fist or your foot will like get enlarged. And I just, I love that. It was just so funny to me. And then if I was playing with my brother, it always ended up us fighting each other and not completing the level. And I'm sure that contributed to not ever beating the game. You know, we've got a couple younger viewers. What exactly was Battletoads? I couldn't tell you. No. <laughs> uh, it was a game uh, for Nintendo, and there have been uh, sequels. They did like Battletoads vs. Double Dragons. There was a remake of it, I believe, on the Super Nintendo. But basically, there were three toads Rash, uh, Pimple, and Zitz. And uh, Pimple was the bigger one, and I think he got um, kidnapped by this evil queen. And it's essentially like a ripoff of Turtles. Today, do you and your brother still like debate who's the better gamer? I don't talk to him anymore because of Battletoads. <laughs> don't talk I don't to know why you think that's funny. It's, it's like a, a real problem in our family. We don't see each other on Christmas anymore. No, um, we actually uh, have sat down to play again. Like We revisited a couple classic games. Oh, you, you sat down recently to play yeah, the classic like, Nintendo NES. Uh, not too long ago, we finally beat Super C. That was a game that like, we played always as a kid but never beat, and then mm -hmm. we finally beat it. So Battletoads may be next on our list to actually try to complete. So that was my number one. That was your number one. What's yours? So thinking about the Nintendo, there, there's so many games. Like one of my favorite earliest ones was like Duck Hunt. That was an honorable mission. But my actual favorite game, I, I never beat it because unlike you, I'm not a 100% completionist, but I tried. Yeah. You know, this is before you had save points and memory cards and all that. Yeah. Batman. Oh, okay. The game, yeah. yep. the video game. Batman the video game. It was based on the 1989 uh, movie. It was really, it was like very unique at the time. Yes. Like you had, you could throw the battering, you could, you know, jump from different walls. All the weapons. All the weapons. They always had a different weapon. So you're trying to, you know, use the rope gun and different things like that to kill enemies. I just remember, and they would always, they had this like, weird burn up animation I remember like yes. when you kill them they kind of burn up and you had to like me my sister and my brother none of us could do it it's it's notoriously it's, hard yeah if you've beaten batman let us know in the comments cuz I, I we came close but it was always like i don't have 10 hours to sit here yeah. and then i have to start over so for me that's also up there for just like nostalgia yeah i just remember always getting electrocuted yeah. and i always remember the start screen with the batmobile coming in and it's funny now that we are, you know, older, mm -hmm. they're making toys for all these 8 bit games. And it wasn't until the NECA version of that Batman came out that I realized that he was even purple. I didn't, like, yeah. remember that. Yeah, I played the game, but I just never took note that he was purple. What was your, your second favorite game? Second favorite, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time because I'm sure all of you agree Nintendo 64, Mario Kart 64. 
I just remember not having Mario Kart 64. I didn't have the system yet, but that was a game that we always played at my cousin's house. We were just like always itching to play like, oh, you got next, you come in last, and just like playing the levels and figuring out the secrets, and then battle mode. It was just like so fun. It's like one of the best games to play, and that's just like, that's my childhood right there. I spent so many hours playing that game. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, it was a great game. I, I, I did play it. I did not own personally in, mm -hmm. in 64. My neighbors owned one, and I would go over and we'd play Mario Kart or something like that. You know, uh, it was fun. I had to, it was a toss up between that, GoldenEye, and Perfect Dark, which are pretty much the same game, but I had mm. to give it to Mario Kart because at the time of there weren't many games like it. I mean, you could yeah. say there were games very similar to it, but like Mario 64 still like very much a part of our gaming community today, Mario Kart. It was really in a, one of those really early immersion sort of games, yeah. visually anyway. Yeah. And so yeah, it was, it was a good game, it was a good game. I would pick my second favorite, because I owned a Genesis. I did too. Yeah, it was Maximum Carnage. Great game. You know, and it's it's so weird that our brother, like I grew up playing with my brother because we're like 15 months apart and I think you and your brother months, are yeah. 17 months apart. And so we just grew up playing games together and we were always, when we would go to Blockbuster, I don't know if anybody remembers Blockbuster to rent video games. Yes. This is like before Netflix guys, ancient era when you game had Gamefly. Gamefly. I don't know, we didn't use that one. I didn't use that until I got a lot of I don't use it. <laughs> oh yeah. Maximum Carnage, my brother and I would play that because it was one of those few co-op games that you could play together and try yeah. to accomplish a mission together. Um, uh, I usually played Venom. Yeah. I think, Justin. You'll have to tell me. I'll talk to him later. I'm like, I think I played Venom a lot. So there was that game. There was also um, Separation Anxiety, but I played like pretty much every beat em up game on Sega. Yeah. Like, I'm a big fan of Streets of Rage. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. that was a good one. And so, uh, those, those were really good. What was your third one? Third one, I have to give it to Crash Bandicoot 2. It just like, I have so many memories playing that game and it really resonated with me, especially since it was a sequel versus like Crash Bandicoot 1, because it introduced the slide and the slide jump and the, the, the body slam that you can do. Mm -hmm. But that was a game that like, I was one of the first games that I 100% completed. Yeah. And you can actually go farther at 104% completed. Of course. And just knowing all those secrets and stuff like that, like there's one level where you can jump on top of the the green boxes, which would instantly kill you, but it was disguised as a staircase. Yeah. Stuff like that that I just thought was like amazing, like for a game. That perspective was also, I think, unique as well. That you yeah. were looking, he was running from, you were looking at him from behind. And, so and in certain levels, you were yeah. running with the camera in front of him, being chased right. by right. Indiana right. Jones like, style. Yeah, yeah, with the boulder. So yeah. it offered a lot of innovation there. It actually reminded me of when I was playing a mobile game, Temple Run. You remember Temple Run? Yeah, yeah. Everybody. I'm sure everybody's downloaded Temple Run at some point. It took me back because mm -hmm. I yeah. played it again recently. I was like, oh, I have this app on my phone. And so I was thinking Similar, about Similar, yeah. like, uh, environment. Yeah. Jungle. Jungle, jumping. Try not to die. Darian, what was your third pick? My third pick, and I thought really hard about this because I've already talked about some of my other favorites like Twisted Metal and Final Fantasy VII, but another game that I spent a lot of time with, G Police. I have never played that. I have no idea what G Police is. G Police was, a, I guess you could call it like a helicopter sort of simulator game. What system? It was for PlayStation. Oh, okay. It was for PlayStation, one of the early PlayStation games. And you had this helicopter that you could outfit with different weapons, and you had to accomplish sort of these really intricate missions inside of the helicopter. It That's was awesome. really amazing. And you could fly really low to the ground with the cars. It was like one of those first sort of death-defying sort of uh, uh, games that really, you were flying around in a city, you had to chase cars or blow something up or find some mission objective or, you know, go through these really, really long tunnels. Okay. And I and that was one of actually one of the first games before Final Fantasy VII Swiss Metal that I beat. Yeah. I want to look that one up. You should look it up. G Police. It was amazing. So those are our favorite childhood video game picks. Please let yeah. us know if you played them and let us know your favorite games or give us a call at 347-948-6271. And if you want to continue the conversation, make sure you follow us on our Discord. The link is in the description. Our next segment is called In Game Chat, where we respond to your comments and pick a comment of the week. So our first comment comes from Game Dominator 99 He says, I'll never submit to the Notification Squad's act of notifying. And that was from our Battlefront, whatever happened to Battlefront 3 video. Nick, ne what did you think of that? You picked that one. Never say never. Never yeah. say never. Brick Production Studio said, it's a shame that the game never came out. And I agree. 
that was a comment on our Whatever Happened to Battlefront 3, which was our video where we kind of went back in time and looked at all the drama surrounding the launch of Battlefront 3. For those who don't know, the Battlefront series on the PlayStation 2 is one of my favorite series, and we were supposed to get a Battlefront 3 on the PS3. Watch hey. the video. Just, just watch the video. This is all, you get all this info there's in the video. A lot of video. Okay, there's a lot of information. They are trying to release. There's a group of community. Uh, community it's in the video. Them. Just watch the video. I just want them to know. I want them to know that there's still hope to play this game. Okay. In the way it was intended to be played. Now they know. Watch the video. That's the penguin. Hey, Darian. You didn't happen to be at some animal-related event a while ago, have you? I may have seen you. And if so, did a lizard poop on you? <laughs> I don't know why you asked me that earlier this week. And now I know that came from the comments. No, I don't know what event this is. I don't know where that came from. That was so funny. Like, Who was this person again? Dash the Penguin. Dash the Penguin. That's I'm pretty so sure it was you. I, I wasn't there, but I'm pretty sure it was you. I don't think it was me. I, wherever, where Dash the Penguin? Please comment down below. I want to know where you're from because I live in New York. King Pun says Splatoon is going to end up like Smash. It's going to come out on every new home console after this. Mm, what do you What do you think? You're you you played a lot of Splatoon. So this came from our Seven Facts video, and I want to agree with him because I do have to say that it was such a quick turnaround between the Wii U release mm -hmm. of Splatoon and Splatoon 2 for the Switch. Yeah. And Smash Brothers, you know, they are putting it on every console since N64, right? And especially with the Switch uh, reveal and the Switch uh, trailer, it was set up like a, you know, an esports arena. And I think, again, Smash wasn't intended to be like a very competitive esports yeah. game, but it became that. And seeing that, I feel like, you know what? They're gonna put their money on Splatoon being that big. Conker says, I own both, and while Zelda Breath of the Wild might not look real, they managed to make it feel real. I have yet to beat Horizon. I'm on my third playthrough of Zelda. Therefore, I conclude Zelda is the superior game. Now, there were so many comments on our comparison between Breath of the Wild and Horizon Zero Dawn. This is just one of the comments I picked out because there was actually a lot in favor of Zelda. <laughs> I'm just saying that I, from what I saw, I mean, I didn't have the blinders on as only looking for Zelda comments, but I just picked it out because I wanted to uh, pick your brain about that. I think everyone's entitled to their opinion. That's fair. And I love that about gaming communities, that everybody has a defined opinion. Now, I am obviously a fan of Horizon Zero Dawn, and I think Breath of the Wild was a great game. Yeah. I, you know, I played through it a little bit, um, <laughs> but... Uh, let me say this, because we, we did the comparison and we didn't make a conclusion, and that's on purpose, right? Like, we, the, each game has their own merits. I think that the story of Horizon Zero Dawn, if you look in the comments on that video, most people would agree with me, was much, uh, was more engrossing, right? Like, it was, it was okay. very, uh, there was a realness and a grittiness to it that you just didn't get in Zelda, and so there's some automatic elements to the game that were very sort of, you felt connected not just to the, to the, to the protagonist and Aloy, but to every character from uh, the warriors that she met along the way. I mean, the ensemble cast, if you will, of that game was really impressive. And some of the, like that first sort of fight with the Thunderjaw, they were like, the stakes felt so high and so real because the world seemed so much bigger than Aloy. I think you have some elements of that in Zelda, but not at the same degree. Like all of the creatures that Aloy was fighting were like 10, 15 times larger than her on screen. So we like to end in-game chat with a pick for comment of the week. We have Chicken the Thing. Today I made a sim named Chicken Nug. She loves everyone, including you. And she got over 900 likes. It was a great comment. And this was on our 107 Sims Facts. And if anyone has ever played The Sims, it's like there's, it's just a community unto itself. Yep. Simply just leave us a comment talking about chicken nugs and you will get comment of the week. <laughs> And our next segment is Fam Roundup, where we shout out the Notification Squad, people who just joined or subscribed, and we play How Well Do You Know a Game. We have a couple shout outs, and you can see them on screen. People who came by the channel, who subscribed, who said they loved us, like, of course, our boy Ryan Koshal. He got first. Always first on Notification Squad. I like this comment. Samantha said, you have amazing facts, and I love it. Kara says, this was actually an amazing video. I expected it to get boring, but it didn't. Great video, subscribe. And I love this from Seamaster. One, two, three, four, five. Seamaster has been, says she's been with us since our first FNAF video, 
which was back in 2015, so a long time subscriber. I'm happy to shout her out. She said, I swear, whatever game I watch someone play, you have already made an episode about it. So I can just watch this and learn stuff I wasn't ever gonna find out. So thank you for commenting and subscribing and joining the squad. We always like to end Fan Roundup with winning prizes with How Well Do You Know That Game? And last week we showed you this image, and if we slowly zoom out, it is revealed that it was Jason from Friday the 13th on the NES. Was that game even scary? It is. He shows up and you're just like, oh no. And then he's like, you know, just a monster. It's pretty much a watered down version of the current Friday the 13th. Play. Yeah, when I was looking at the picture, I was like, oh, that doesn't look terrifying at all. He's purple or got some sort of green cosmetic going on. No, some of you did get it right. You said Jason Voorhees in an old game and uh, you said the original Friday the 13th. Someone said Mega Man question mark? But yeah. there can only be one winner. There can only be one winner. And the winner for this How Well Do You Know game is Dimitri Ross, who said that picture is Friday the 13th. And they added NES. And they were first. That's how you play the game. Be the first one to comment. But not only did that person win a Best Buy gift card, you can also win a Best Buy gift card. Now, all you have to do is identify this image that's on screen right now. And if you know what it is, leave a comment and you can win a Best Buy gift card. Dimitri, thanks for playing. Make sure you DM us on Twitter with your contact information so we can make sure you get your prizes. And if you wanna play How Well Do You Know a Game, make sure you check the link in the description because there are some rules and conditions that do apply. So that's pretty much Notification Squad. Be sure to give us a call at 347-948-6271 and let us know what we should talk about next. And if you wanna become part of the Notification Squad, make sure you subscribe and then click that notification bell so you're alerted whenever we upload videos. And Nikki, when do we upload videos? We upload five times a week. And we upload Wednesday through Sunday. So that's five times a week. You're right, Nikki. So if you want to get more out of your game, subscribe to the leaderboard, your home for, for video, video game, game facts. facts. <laughs> um, sorry. And that is Monday. No. <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday, it's easy. Wednesday through Sunday. This is supposed to be easier, but I still find a way to mess it up.